Hello, and welcome to Context Free, where we talk about programming languages. Today, I want to talk about pluggable type systems and optional and gradual typing, static and dynamic typing, and type soundness. Wow, that's a mouthful. This is motivated by the Dart programming language, how it first came out, and then the subsequent success of the TypeScript programming language. Let's see the story behind this stuff. Notice that Dart's peak search interest is October 2011 when it was first announced. Here's when the news broke about Google making a new programming language Dart with the intent to uh, replace JavaScript in the browser. Here's the purported leaked internal email from a year earlier at uh, Google as well where they discussed this. Note that Dart, which was originally called Dash internally, was not designed as a statically typed language, but an optionally typed language with judicious use of types so that it could be toolable with static typing. And meanwhile, here we note that when Angular 2 chose TypeScript over Dart, that this gave some additional boost and started some of the rise of TypeScript popularity. Meanwhile, it seems like optional typing has become all the rage with optional typing present in PHP, Python, GDScript, and more. Going back to Dart for a second, I want to talk about Gilad Braca, who, among other things, uh, was at times responsible for the specification of the Dart programming language, as well as the Java programming language. Java 5, which came out in 2004, included support for generics. Note, though, that it famously supports generic erasure in the sense that there's no runtime type information to the Java generics. And this goes along with Gilad Braca's interest in pluggable type systems in the sense that you haven't changed the dynamic behavior of the Java programming language, which includes generics. It just lets you add some static typing as a compiler or static type checker might see fit. In particular here, if we look at the pluggable type systems paper from Gilad Braca, which came out around the same time as Java 5, uh, he promotes the idea that if you have an optional type system, that neither syntactically nor semantically required, then that allows you to have a pluggable type system in the sense that then you can have whatever static type checker you want that provides whatever level of soundness or security you expect from a type system. Uh, Meanwhile, in terms of pluggable type systems, this has been touted uh, for Java itself in the form of type annotations. There's a number of Python type checkers these days that presumably have different rules and capabilities. And even in terms of JavaScript, not only do we have uh, TypeScript as a sort of a pluggable type system to JavaScript, but there's also Flow as another famous type checker for JavaScript. And meanwhile, Dart itself, interestingly, has backed off from the idea of optional typing. And now with Dart 2 includes a type system they tout as sound, which includes a much more uh, strict, dynamic, and static type checking. But enough chit chat, let's go to the demos. For the demos, before we get to Dart, I want to see how Erasure worked out with Java generics just to prove the point about this. So we can say var strings equals new array list of string arrays dot as list high there this gives us presumably an array list of string let's go on ahead and print that out the class of this to the console just to see what it thinks it is I can say java c erasure dot java and java erasure and we see that our class is java.util.arraylist, not arraylist of string. And in fact, through proper casting, we could add integers and other types of objects to this arraylist if we wanted to. Moving on to Dart and the rest of the languages I want to demo today, I'm going to emphasize broken wrong things just to see what happens. So for example, in a Dart here, we're going to pretend that 2 is a string. Let's see what happens. If we run under Dart1, we can say Dart broke dot Dart. And it has no complaints. Uh, we could try to print this out. We can say print message. We see a two there, sweet. Now there is a checked mode in Dart1 that uh, even adds dynamic typing, which is interesting given, uh, again, Braca's interest in no changes to dynamic behavior based on a type system. But here we see this anyway. We have an exception from runtime where we can't cast int to a string. Now, this idea of dynamic typing was optional in Dart 1, and it's interesting to note that we can try to treat this as a string if we want to, 
And if we do this, even without the checked mode, we're gonna see that we get a runtime exception because there's no such thing as length on an integer. Had it actually been a string, then we'd have gotten what we expect. And meanwhile though, if we go to Dart2, we're gonna see we actually get a static type error instead that says that two cannot be assigned to a variable of type string. Moving on TypeScript, we're gonna break it just as we broke everything else so far. So we're gonna pretend that uh, we wanna have a string, but it's a number two. And let's go on ahead and log the message length. Now if we run this here, we're gonna see that we have a static type error that we cannot assign two to a string. And TypeScript type system is not sound. We can subvert it anytime we want to just by going through any in between. Run it now and we get undefined because there's no length defined on integer. Now the important thing to point out here for both Dart and TypeScript, even when we don't have static typing, even when we don't have dynamic type checking, is that there's actually a certain level of soundness here because the question is what do you define unsound to mean? Does unsound mean that you have a lie from your type system or does unsound mean that you have undefined behavior? And if we go to C++, we'll see a big difference of what this means here, for example. I'm gonna treat the number two as a string here. I have to jump through some hoops, or rather I'm gonna type a little more text when it comes to C++. Let's go on ahead and pretend that this integer is a pointer to a standard string. We're also gonna to have to go by means of a void pointer in C++, just how we went through mean, by means of any in TypeScript. So let's static cast that to a void pointer. And going ahead and try to print out the message length here from C++. Notice I'll have no complaints from the compiler. Say G++ dash O broke broke.cpp and broke. Now notice here the length of my string is not this crazy number that I don't have a string in the first place. It's just misinterpreting memory. This is undefined behavior. Nothing in the C++ spec is going to tell me what happens if I do horrible things like this. Now maybe it can run more elaborate static checkers or dynamic checkers such as, you know, through Valgrind or some such. But C++ out of the box when I break its type system has undefined behavior. So in my mind, this is much more unsound, for example, than TypeScript or Dart1, where we had defined behavior even if we lied to the type system. And moving on now to statically typed Python, we can also break things. Note that there are several static type checkers available for Python. I'm gonna use MyPy here, which is possibly the most well-known and is one of the earlier versions of static type checking for Python. If I run it against here, we'll say incompatible types and assignment that we can't assign to to a string. Now I could do things like uh, import cast operations and cast this to a string. Notice I don't have to go by means of any in between. And I lie to my pie and it decides to believe me that two is now a string. If I want to go ahead and print the length of my message, I get this runtime error where again, there's no such thing as a length on an integer and this fails. And note again, we see the same behavior here as we did with Dart and TypeScript that the dynamic nature of those languages, even in absence of static type checking, has defined a behavior unlike what we saw in C++ where we get arbitrary, who knows what's gonna happen, and security risks uh, that are dependent on whatever happens to happen at runtime. And meanwhile, before I go, I wanna point out the nominal dynamic type checking of Python 2 versus the structural or duck typing we're usually familiar with there. If it waddles like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it must be a duck. So for example here, I have this class where I store a greeting into it that I call the greet method, which will print out the greeting. If I do this here, I should see that it says hi, cool. Now what happens if I go and make a new class 
that looks like the previous class, let's call it class B, but isn't the same. And one of the things you can do in Python is you can say, hey, I want to call this method uh, through the class itself and provide as the first parameter what should be the self. So if I run this again, I'll get the same behavior as before. And interestingly, I can also swap out the A for the B. Because it has a greeting member, I can pass it in as the self of A. And it works just fine also. Now the interesting thing though is that there was dynamic type checking in Python 2 in this instance. If I run this instead of through Python 3, I run it through Python 2 instead, I get a runtime error because it says unbound method greet, this is unbound, must be called with A instance as first argument, got a B instance instead. So internally inside of Python 2, there was a check that forced this self to be of type A when I'm calling it through a method. That was gone as we noticed in Python 3 where it just worked and we have pure structural or duck typing. Anyway, it's interesting to see that Dart has moved away from its original basis of being a duck typed or structurally typed dynamic system to being something that has more sophisticated dynamic and static type checking. And it'll be interesting to see what happens in the future with this regard in various languages. Bye y'all.